Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing an Advanced Dungeons & Dragons advice video. <laughs> Be a stingy dungeon master. And I don't mean that in a bad way. What I'm saying is Monty Hall games don't usually last. Have you ever been in a game where every player has so many magic items that they can't figure out which one to use in a, in a given situation? Well, could I use this? I could use this. I could use this. I could use this. You know, that kind of thing. I've run in real Monty Hall games where you needed separate portable holes to carry all of your magic items and all of your gold and another one for all of your platinum and still another for all of your silver. But you carried all of your gear, you know, your bedroll, your rations, your whatever, in a backpack. That kind of thing. Those games usually do not last long. The reason being is that an adventurer who can purchase any kingdom he wants, they're kind of boring to run. One of the primary reasons for adventuring is the need for money or the desire for a better life. Once that's achieved, it's pointless to continue. <clears throat> I run my, campa my campaigns where magic is rare and platinum is almost unheard of. Check out my videos in, on, on game economics and treasure. You'll see what I'm talking about. A stable economy in any game is a necessity. An economy could be poor or booming, but it needs to remain stable with changes coming gradually. Radical shifts in any local economy can do far more harm than good. Let me explain. If a group of six adventurers shows up with tons of gold and they start spending it like water, local shopkeepers and merchants will see it and suddenly prices for all manner of goods will skyrocket. This is a form of inflation. Poor people in the area will not be able to afford basic necessities. <laughs> you, there, This is playing out right now in real life. And I don't want to make this political, so I'm just going to touch on it. The Biden administration, their policies, have created massive inflation in America. Fuel prices, food prices, uh all ma everything is more expensive. People are having a hard time making ends meet. Okay. The rich elites don't notice. Why? Because they're rich. You see what I'm saying? They can afford the stuff. Poor folks can't. The regular common people can't. That's the effect of inflation. Think of boom towns in the old west where the price of a shovel of a shovel went from $2 to $30 overnight. And bacon and beans became a commodity which people were willing to kill for. Be stingy with the gold and other coins. That's all I'm saying. As a, a, Go check out my other videos on the economy and, and, uh, and uh, wow, inflation and things like that. You'll see what I'm talking about. As for magic items, they are costly for a reason. They require lots of time, money, and effort to create, and their value only increases over time. I've seen campaigns where magic items are a dime a dozen, and the local magic shop runs a daily two for the price of one sale. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I get a cold, and I feel when I get over it, it takes like months to get rid of the congestion. It's, it's, I'm sorry. My apologies. But... When games where campaigns where the where the magic is everywhere it's dripping off of people people have so much magic as really magic items it's crazy in my game you might find a shop where a limited number of magic items might be available but you're going to pay well over book price for them sometimes 10 or 15 times book price if a down on his luck mercenary is living in a gutter begging for food and he's armed with a plus three sword and a plus two dagger He's an idiot and deserves to be a beggar. Selling off that plus two dagger will feed, clothe, and house him for years. Believe it or not, I ran into such a beggar once in a campaign, and the dungeon master couldn't figure out why the situation was ludicrous. In my campaigns, 95% of the world's inhabitants have never even seen a magic item, much less own one. Of the 5% who have, the vast majority do not own one. If the ones who do, of the ones who do, 
They are minor items which have been acquired either on a battlefield or as a boon from a wealthy or well-connected patron, possibly a lord or some familial connection. <coughs> Most magic items are the minor variety, okay, because they're easier to create. There will be m relatively more abundant. That being said, no magic item should ever be in abundance. Uh, maybe, maybe healing potions. Maybe, and that's only if you're a, if you're a, a soft-hearted dungeon master. Um, regardless, if a non-player character owns any magic item, you need to have a backstory as to how they acquired it, especially if this if non-player character is middle class or lower. A military commander with a magic sword or armor can be believable if his if he's like a high high ranking officer or or comes from a wealthy family or something like that i can see <clears throat> what all of this means is that if a group of player characters has more wealth than they can carry remember gold and silver weighs a lot or has more than one or two magic items each they are oh my god rich they need to be worrying about investments and purchasing property rather than exploring ruins player characters who are anxious to go find gold and adventure are far less likely to refuse jobs. Basically, if you keep them hungry, they will be more willing to accept any job you throw at them. Remember, the average peasant earns about a silver piece a day. Okay? If every run-of-the-mill encounter benefits the player characters with wagon loads of gold and so many magic items that they roll for who gets to pick first and they get multiple picks then A, the Dungeon Master is a money hole, and B, <clears throat> the player characters will retire very soon. Replacing such player characters because, you know, if a player retires a character, they will want to make a new one to play in your game. Replacing such player characters can be difficult because it's hard to work them into the existing campaign. Uh, and I, I cannot stress that enough. Um... I, I stated I put this in another video where player or dungeon masters are loath to kill off players, player characters because they it 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 interferes with the existing campaign. It's more they have to keep track of. It's they have to now get this new player into the game with a motive and a reason to be there. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, oh, and and all the other stuff that goes with it. It's better just to keep them alive, broke. And wanting to adventure, willing to do things. Remember, Conan stayed pretty broke until he finally became a king. Now, all that being said, if you have wealthy players who want to continue, their player characters are wealthy and they still want to continue running them, you're going to have to get into the higher echelons of the game, meaning, you know, politics, uh, earning money as a shopkeeper paying dues to a, a local guild, uh, you know, dealing with uh, thieves and 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 uh, protection rackets, the thieves guild, things like that. You know, you're going to have to get into that aspect as opposed to going out and exploring ruins. Your, your game dynamic is going to have to shift. It is possible and it is fun, but most players just want to go out and have a good time. They're not into the politics part of it. So if you keep them stingy, they'll keep, keep, or if you keep them broke, and if you're stingy and you keep them broke, you'll keep them in that original dynamic. You see what I'm saying? That's 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 my advice. Again, I'm just trying to give you experience, the, the, the benefit of my years of experience, and I'm not saying you have to play it this way. You can feel free to use, abuse, ignore, or rewrite all of my advice, and I'm okay with it. The whole point is to make sure everybody has fun. You folks have a good one now. God bless one and all. There is a house in New Orleans where the monsters all hang out. When the police detective, who happens to be a skinwalker squirrel, uncovers a plot by a paranormal perpetrator, he has to enlist the aid of his fellow housemates. If you enjoy a modern quirky take on historical mythology, check out my new original novel, The House Off Farrago Road.